Good morning. Today is Sunday, April 28th, 2024. I'm Belinda with Belinda's Bobbles, and today is the last day of the North Texas Yarn Crawl. And we are heading out to the northernmost uh, stores today. Cynthia's Corner, Quixotic Fibers, and Cotton Mill Yarn. Unfortunately, this will be our last time to go to Cynthia's because she is closing on the 30th. She is retiring. It's nothing horrible or anything. It's just it was time for her um, to retire and just enjoy her craft and her time with her family. We're going to miss her. She is a sweet, sweet lady, and I'm looking forward to seeing her at least this one last time today. Then we're heading over. And now, she is in... Gainesville yes and then we're heading from there to Quixotic Fiber which is in a brand new location they have split their shop in two and are now in two locations Florida and here and um, due to another retirement <laughs> and then um, so we're this is gonna be our first time seeing them in their new Denison location and then we'll be heading all the way over to Bonham. Now, you may not have any clue on distances on these things. So the first location we're going is about 53 miles. Then from there, I think it's at least another 30. I'm pretty sure we're going to be going at least to get to the three stores. It's going to be about 200 miles. Yeah, and then still have to get back home. And of course, I'm going to look along the way and see if there's anything interesting that we have to go see. I'm betting there's some in Denison because just the few pictures I'm seeing, this is an amazing little um, place that they're in. So anyways, we're going to go see what we can see. So come along. Okay, I forgot again to tell you, I am wearing my brand new um, secret summer crop. Of course, it's not cropped on me. It's very long. <laughs> but I just finished this. It's in a linen and cotton. And I'll put the information down below as far as what all it's made from. But I am loving it. This is only my second time wearing it. I couldn't wait for the next um, podcast to do that. I needed to go ahead and get it out and wear it. So you'll see it along the way. And... Um, I am going to be listening to a book again. I finished my other book. It was so good. Uh, but I'll put the information here as to the name of what we're listening to. So come on, join me. We need to go crawl. Let's get this party started. So we have about 224 miles to traverse today. And this was just curious to me. We're going down the road and I'm seeing this big box. And then another one. Anybody have any ideas what these are? Please let me know. We're now um, going past the University of North Texas. Another week and Seaver is graduating from there. So I was excited to see it. We are now in Gainesville, Texas. This is the downtown area. And just off the square is where Cynthia's Corner Yarn Shop has been for 11 years. This was her last weekend open. She is retired now. And I'm definitely going to miss this stop. Sometimes this is my only time up there. I try to stop in more often, but I just love visiting with Cynthia, and I'm going to miss that. But um, I'm excited for all of her retirement plans. She so deserves it. But I know Gainesville is going to really miss this location because, I mean, look, she has uh, she's taking care of her crafters and her yarn wranglers. Look at these buttons. <clears throat> Sorry, you've got my morning voice today. But I love just looking through these antique buttons. I mean, look at this. They are still on the cards. 
my mom had a supply like this and just due to situations I ended up selling mine but she had all these different crafts taken care of for the people in Gainesville I hope somebody else may um, open something in the area but it wasn't just yarn it was a full craft store Cynthia also has always had all of these great physical patterns that you don't find hardly anywhere else and walking in I was kind of expecting that the store would be fairly empty but she still had an amazing selection and this color burst was just beautiful there was one yarn that I don't know where else it's being sold and that is Mib Fibers she is out of Arkansas I believe and I know this was the only place in Texas to my knowledge that sold it so that was something unique always to Cynthia's but a lot of these other yarns you know such as Sugarbush, Croy you can find them other locations I almost got this shirt isn't that great Cynthia actually had one on herself and I kept thinking that is just so me today because and on this crawl because I was bad <laughs> I tried to be good now Circulo is out of Brazil I believe and I've seen the crochet bags with the projects and everything they are so these amigurumis are so cute and I, those I've been seeing in different locations and different shops but this crawl was the first time that I'd actually seen circulo yarns and we're going to see those in just a moment these I believe are some universals and of course these are the self-striping garment yarns I have a tank top and a t-shirt so far and I have enough from last year's yarn crawl to do another t-shirt and here this is the circuit uh, some of the circulo Brazilian merino and I had just not come across it before my understanding it is it's fairly new in Texas this last year they had some great soft colors they weren't real harsh and she um, Cynthia was showing me and telling me about this sugar cane this is sugar cane yarn not that one but this lighter gray one here yeah this one it's also by um, Circulo and they take sugar cane and after they get all the juice out of it to make um, syrups and sugar then they use the fiber and it makes a yarn that is similar to bamboo it was so soft okay so I'd gotten distracted so I had to come back over here <laughs> And then, of course, looking back, I didn't see the prices on these. I would have bought all the pom-poms. They were $3 a piece. And I missed it. I'm so sorry, Whitney. That's all I can say. Okay, so this is a sport weight yarn. And you get 200 grams for each of these cakes. So that red one there, yeah, that came home with me. And I've started a t-shirt. <laughs> not the one I planned bamboo pop she's always had an amazing selection of bamboo pop but she also has acrylic yarns and she just carried a wide range in a wide ra uh, range of um, price points I'm telling you I was not expecting there to still be so much in this shop I was expecting it to be fairly empty she had some great sales but not everything was on sale so I'm sure she had plans for what was happening with it but she was showing me this circular um, 
magazine, I guess. And something that um, she had noticed and was telling me about was that she had noticed that the models in here are not what you would expect all the time. There were some great size inclusive um, patterns. And I'm trying to get one of these books, but I have it as of yet. This is Circulo's summer um, catalog or magazine. And they've got all these great patterns in the back. There are crochet as well as knit. And a lot of the clothing that they have in here, they also have the instructions for lining them. Aren't these great? Okay, she also had a um, shop that had popcorn in there. And this came from Kaysen's Candy Company that just opened less than a year ago in Gainesville. Salted caramel had to come home with me. Okay, so now we're going 20-something miles on up the road, and we are heading to Denison. This was my first time in Denison, so I wanted to kind of look around a little bit. And there off to the right is the Traveler's Hotel. It's a historic building. It was just so cool looking. Um, it started in 1893. It's been a grocery store, a residence, a hotel, and a five-star res um, restaurant. And this is showing you just the downtown area. It's kind of wide open. And Quixotic Fiber is now located and has moved one of their locations now, because they've split into two, to the Katy Depot. And Katy Depot um, was built in 1911. It's basically a community hub, and look at the flooding <laughs> that had happened. We've been having a lot of rain lately. But inside this building, they have um, space for events. They have businesses. They also have um, lofts in here. And I just absolutely love this um, art piece that was out there. Because, of course, being a depot, we're talking trains, and this is right next to the train yard. And so I'm assuming at one time it actually was a deep, regular depot. Now, Katie, what it's referring to is the Kansas, Missouri, Texas uh, train line. And we're also going to take a peek after we see this yarn shop at something else here in the area. Isn't this an amazing art piece? So let's head on in and take a look and see what Quixotic Fibers looks like now. So after eight years, Quixotic Fiber had been on Main Street in Whitesboro uh, here in Texas. And so now they have um, moved and split their shop. They're located here in Denison, Texas at the new um, Texas store. Isn't this venue space amazing? Uh, and the uh, Denison store is being managed by Emily. They moved it here because this is closer to where she lives. And she has um, the store, and of course, all the yarn babies help her out with um, taking care of it, as well as Karen. And then the other location that's been opened is in Zephyr Hills, Florida. At least uh, they're opening soon on Fifth Avenue in Zephyr Hills, and Carla will be managing that one. And um, she's... Last I heard, she was looking for some part-time employees or volunteers to help her. She also has moved the dye studio there. Now, I could not believe all of the things that 
um, Emily has gotten into this shop. It has gone from a much larger space to this small, just one room basically, but floor to ceiling yarn. They have always had a large collection of Dream in Color, and this is new with Dream in Color. These are all botanically dyed, and I think they're non-superwash. I can't remember, but it's lamb and goat. And they were just absolutely beautiful, that whole row up. There was Malabrigo to the right. All of this Dream in Color. And it's just amazing what she was able to put in here. I just kept wandering around and again and again, and you will see as I'm showing, trying to show you everything, she has just stocked this store so full of so much. And of course, as usual, as soon as I start recording, everyone wakes up and gets moving. And I start dropping things. So sorry about some of those extra noises, but we're going to keep going. Now let's see, Look, I mean down below she's got more items. Now this was something she told me about as far as the embroidery thread. This is all wool embroidery thread. That way whenever you, um, if you use it to put something on one of your knitted or crocheted items, it blends in better than if you were using a cotton or synthetic thread. Those were just so cute. Those little bitty skeins. And she had some kits from the fiber company. I think these were sock kits. Since I was dealing one-handed, I <laughs> didn't, <get it. laughs> didn't look too deep into it. But yeah, the Amble um, yarn. And that is a little diaper cover there to the left and some of the baby clothes that she had made. And I'm betting the kids wore, her kids wore them Okay, so you'll see me come back again and again because I just kept finding more and more. I mean, you can look at all these displays and all the different things that she has. It's such a wide variety and so much is stacked and into this. A lot of Quince & Co. items. And these are, oh shoot, can't remember the name of it. I'm sorry, I missed that one. But uh, they also ship all over the United States. They have their own line of yarn that is dyed. There was some in here, but they're setting the studio up in Florida. But um, they'll be carrying it in both locations. And this was just a beautiful shawl, crocheted, and just taking um, a yarn that has a different color to it and popping those stitches out. See one, another one of those paint cans there. And this embroidery kit was just so beautiful. Everything was in there including your hoop and this is what it makes. They also had a lot of lemon wood fiber tools scattered all over. And I have one of those lemon wood yarn holders there that I absolutely love. You're getting my full set of morning sounds. Welcome to my morning. <laughs> but 
You're also getting my morning voice, so I am very sorry you're getting that deeper voice. This was uh, something I hadn't seen anywhere else, these booties, as far as to be able to put non-slip, which I've done something similar with just some uh, leather patches on the bottom of crocheted um, slip-ons before, but I liked that. And Whitney, this is for you. Look at all of those pom-poms. Then you've got your weapons of mass creation. I loved that. And all throughout the shop, she has all these drawers. So it's like going on a treasure hunt. Not all the stuff that she has out on display. But then Emily will tell you, go open the drawers. See what you find. She's got them all labeled. The amount of time to get this all put together. Look at all these DPNs down through here circulars they've always had a large selection of needles and I was wondering about that at this location and that's where they are books and look at that spinning wheel and of course I found the sales stuff and she had some great sales going on I mean the sock yarn as far as eight dollars a skein for some of the commercial sock yarns. She had some sales on the needles. And then, okay, that thick, thick yarn was just something else. And I was glad that they still had all these buttons. She's all, They've always had a lot of different buttons and choices. Okay, let's delve in a little bit deeper. We've got some commercial yarns down here because you had the... Um, and then up above, we've got more tools and different things that we can just kind of go through. I mean, look at these clips, row counters, gauges, tape, snips, the maker clips, and they carry a lot of cocoa knit products. And something I'm needing to get done is some darning. So this was something I was looking at. They had two different sizes of darning looms. And I had not seen this one before. I was going to open it up and decide there was a smaller one up top that was a lot easier to get to, so why not? You know, go the e easier way. It's very easy to hold that in your hand, the way that it's shaped, to be able to work with it. And it comes with the band and needle, everything you need to get going on darning those projects. More drawers, I'm telling you. I found drawers upon drawers upon drawers. And I didn't even show you some of them. She had a whole drawer or a stackable area with all these drawers of pre-made socks. Now these look like they were handmade and they are even lovingly uh, mismatched, which very much the way I would be making them myself. So though, I did end up with a couple of pairs of those, one for Sam, one for Seaver that I brought home, which I may or may not be able to show, depends on how, what kind of condition they're in. <laughs> okay, I've got some great nieces and nephews on the way. So this was something I was looking at, the Super Duper Soaker. Let's see, what else did I find for you? Okay, so this is some of that amble that was in the kit, except this one isn't, I don't know if that was sock weight or not. And I'm thinking it may have been botanically dyed. Okay, so after all that yarny goodness, I decided to go out back and see what else I could find. 
And this here is part, let me look up my notes here. This is part of the Red River Railroad Museum. Information there on that north-south, because this is the Katy Railroad, which is the Missouri-Kansas-Texas Railroad. See that MKT? And then the next car says Katie's on it. And they just had all these train cars here outside. Now they have a building with um, just on the square that has all sorts of information and is the main part of the museum. So I'm not showing you everything. I'm just showing you this little bit here that was on display. And you just kept, I kept going back, and there was just car after car after car. And if you look down below, I think I show it in just a moment, these are blackberry vines all underneath here. Look at that old safe. It's like looking behind the curtain and seeing what else you can find. I mean, yeah, here's, these are all blackberries vines all underneath here. And it goes all the way back to just this little bitty train car. You would have expected this to be one that had the um, oh, lever on it. But I got a little bit of knitting time here before getting back on the road. There's some cows that were going by. And then we got to downtown Bonham to the cotton mill. This was my last stop, and it's located inside of a um, antique little craft mall, right on the square. I think it's the Mercantile. And unfortunately, my camera messed up in this last shop, so I only got a little bit of footage, and I am just so, so sorry, because I've tried to figure out a way, aren't those cute crochet dolls? She had so many amazing things. She also had Circulo here. And so I was glad to see that again. These were some hand dyed yarns. And I'm afraid that is it. This was a picture from last year, by the way, to show you the rest of the shop. So that's a wrap for this year. Thank you so much for coming with me. Please do go over to uh, day one's episode to leave a comment to enter in for the Potiversary drawing, and I will see you soon.